Well, it's time to learn something new. Uh, what you're looking at here is a GM Tech 2 scanner. This is one of the Chinese clone versions, which works great. I've had it for four or five years, maybe. Um, I only made one video about how to use this, and uh, I thought about I'd make a couple more videos showing specifically different things you can use. With The first video was just kind of an overview of what it can do. But in this video, I'm going to show you how to use this tool to do something called a fuel injector balance test, which like at the moment with my 8.1 Vortec, I'm not having any issues, but uh, it's a good idea to know the condition of your injectors. But if I was having like a small misfire or the engine wasn't running just right, this is a powerful tool to use so you can test your injectors to make sure they're all within spec and they're all uh, within the same value, within, I think, one or two PSI is what they, they want you to do. But if you're going to do this, first of all, you need this tool. Now, I got this. Yeah, I got my receipt here somewhere. When did I buy this thing? Um, I don't see the date on it right off. But here, I got a good deal on it when I bought it. $278. Now, they're running a little over 300 bucks. But I was going to point out, when you buy one of these things, or see, see here, get it up close. Just look for one that it says um, GM, Saab, Opel, Suzuki, all that stuff. Then it, will, it doesn't list Workhorse, but it has Workhorse in there. So don't be concerned if you don't see the word Workhorse. But if you have, because they come with different cards you can buy. And different cards cover a different set of vehicles. But if you find, uh, I think it's like, like 32 megabyte cards or something like that, they, they slip in the, the back of it. Uh, so, um. Anyway, pick you one of these up, and they're just a, a, a really powerful tool, even if you're not a mechanic, because you may be on the road and start having engine issues, and you may be able to come across a mechanic, but maybe he don't have a scan tool to pull the data out of this workhorse, because I've, I've spent money on other scan tools, been even over $200 on scan tools, plug them up just to find out they won't give me the data I need. The one powerful thing this will give you is live engine data. While the engine is running, you can monitor things. So if you happen to have a misfire on one particular cylinder while it's running, it'll tell you what cylinder is misfiring. So that's such a powerful tool. So you can go after that one cylinder and not start throwing parts at the, at the problem. That's something I hate. Um, so many people, even mechanics, unfortunately, they don't diagnose. They just start throwing parts. They say, well, you got a, you got a misfire on your 8.1. I say, well, well, it could be an injector, so you know, so let's just put in a whole new set of injectors. Well, that'll be a thousand dollars, you know. And then, you, but you get done, you pay your bill, and you still got a misfire on the way home. And you take about, well, it must be something else. Then uh, let me see. Let's let's try some new coils or you know plug wire. You know, you know it, it just goes on and on until they happen to get it right. So, but with a, the, the proper tool, you don't have to guess. You can really troubleshoot it. So um, let's. Uh, well, let me see here. Because all I did, I went to my service manual and it printed it out and tells you how, how to do this. It's, it's, it's a pretty simple procedure. So let me plug this tool up. So all you need here, it's, see it's got a power cable that goes under the bottom of it. And if I can find, oh, that right, there it is. So I plugged up to the cigarette lighter to give it 12 volts power. And then we got the, uh, the, the OBD2 connector. So i got to get it connected up. But let me, it's going to take two hands. So let me do that real quick. Oh, and just in case you're new to the uh, the workhorse world, the OBD2 connector, you, you'll see the little gray cap there. That's our connector for the um, ABS test port. Just behind it is where you plug in your OBD2 connector. So we got that done. All right, turn on the ignition. All right, let, let, let me get that noise out of the way. All right. I need to mention something here. All right, that's enough. Okay, so because I know I'm spoiled, I've added this fuel pressure gauge right on the dash. So it's really going to make it handy for me because I can sit right here and watch it. Now, you may not, may not have that. So what you may need to do is run out and pick up one of these. In fact, I even I carry this with me just as a backup. And, and I would recommend, because it's critical, for 8.1 engines to maintain fuel pressure. If we drop fuel pressure and we don't know it, we could run lean and melt the piston and, and destroy your engine. So fuel pressure is critical for us. Um, so that's why I really love, because usually we want about 61, 62 PSI. So, uh, cause we're sitting here key off, it's holding at 51. 
So, um, but when I start the engine up, you'd, you'd see it would jump up to about 62 PSI. So that's a, it's a great tool, but if you don't, at least have one of these with you. So if you have any, any issues, the first thing you want to check, you know, if your engine dies on you, it doesn't start, the first thing we want to check is make sure we have fuel pressure on the fuel rail. So if you didn't have a setup like this, you'll need to get your little gauge and you screw it onto the fuel rail right down there. Now you see my little, little setup. That's my sending unit that sends the, uh, the fuel pressure signal up to the dashboard. So I know exactly what's going on. But uh, originally I had a little Schrader valve right here that you'd unscrew and you would screw this, screw this onto. <clears throat> and then you'd, you'd uh, start to use the tool here and then go, go by the pressure and continue the test. All right, so let's turn the tool on and see what we can get with here. We can, we'll figure this out together. This is really the first time I performed this test. All right. Booting up, booting up. Tech 2, 32 megabytes. Let me get the camera in the room so we see everything. Let me get a little closer. All right. Okay. Enter to continue. Oops. Okay. Diagnostics. All right. We're going to go down here to... Now, you may have a... Um, I've noticed... You can go into 2004, it goes way on back. How far back does it go? 95, 96. You know, I don't even know what year they first came out with the uh, 8.1. But I do know all the way back to 2004, they have the workhorse chassis. Um, let's, let's go to 2003. I can't remember if it's workhorse. See, they don't have workhorse listed back to 2003. But they do have um, like truck and other stuff. You can get in here and pull up the 8.1 engine all right i had to pause there for a second had a phone call so let's go back to i was talking about older rvs because this is a 2005 but say for instance and i notice uh it only lists workhorse down to 2004. when you get to 2003 you open it up powertrain whoops wait a minute let me go back again where is it at where is it at yeah, 2003. Yeah, we don't have the workhorse. Doesn't is not listed, but it, it doesn't really matter because you can go back here. Say for instance, let's go back to 2002 even. So even though workhorse is not listed as an option, you can go down to medium duty truck, and go to powertrain, choose the 8.1. Push push a lot of buttons here. Go to 8.1. Choose five speed and choose special functions, fuel system, fuel injector balance. It does the same thing. You can still get in there and do the same stuff. So don't be concerned if you have an older uh, workhorse. You can still pull the data out of the engine that you need. All right, so let's back up, get back to where I want to be on ours. All right, oops, went too far. Get back in, enter. All right, diagnostics. We're working on a 2005. Here we go. And there is my workhorse. We have the W24 powertrain. There's our 8.1 Vortec, five speed automatic uh, Allison. And I want to go to special functions. And I want to do go into the fuel system because we want to test the injectors. And later, I'm going to make another video doing a cylinder balance test to show you how that works. Let's go to fuel injector balance this time. Okay, ensure all fuel lines are connected. We've got that done. Enter to continue. Connect fuel pressure gauge because luckily I've already got the gauge right here. Or, you know, you if, if not, you just... Pick you on what one of one of these at O'Reilly somewhere and plug it up to the Schrader valve, like I showed you earlier. And hit enter. And it says each injector can only be uh, flowed or pulsed once per ignition cycle because they do that because they don't want you repeating the test over and over, flooding the engine full of fuel. So they want you to cycle it and start start the engine in between. Go here. Okay. 
select the injector to be tested. We're going to start with injector one, Hit enter. Okay, priming the systems. All right, so we got 52 PSI, and I'm gonna get my pen and paper out. So I'm gonna wipe this down, log it. Okay, so we're sitting at 51 PSI. I got my paper ready, and now we're going to pulse the injector. Just go down and hit this, this white button. Well, I didn't push it hard enough, push it. All right, injector already tested, unable to restart test during this engine's off cycle. I know what I did wrong. I, I, I jumped in here earlier and I hadn't started the engine since. So like I said before, it's protecting itself. So actually I need to start the engine so I can continue with this test. So let me do that. Okay, I've started the engine and let's shut her down. Ignition back on. Now see if we can perform the test again. Beep, 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 beep. Okay, back to fuel injector balance test. Let's hit enter. We already got the lights, got that done. Connect fuel pressure gauge, that's done. Each injector is right full plus. All right, we got that took care of because we restarted the engine, I believe. Enter. All right, select the one. And to activate it, you can't hardly see the, the light's not good in here. But you got four buttons across the, the bottom here. And whenever it's got a, a, a white block, you push the button the court right below it correspondingly. So let's hit this, see what happens. Select injector. Oh, I don't know what did it move for. How did I select it? Oh, I see what it did. You can choose any, any injector you want. Okay, so that's the if you want to test one individual injector, but I want to test them all. All right, so we're learning this together. So I'm one. Now I'm going to hit the enter button in the center here. Priming system. Okay, we're primed. Record fuel pressure reading. All right, 51 PSI, got it wrote down. Okay, now let's pulse the injector. Now here, we gotta follow that white and push this button down here. All right, 22 PSI. All right, write that down. And it did say you wanna write it down kind of quickly because it will creep back up. All right, so we got injector one tested. Let's go to the next. Injector number two. Priming up. All right, it's also 51. And now we're going to pulse. All right, 21. All right, one pound difference. Let's go to the next. All right, 51 again, and pulse that injector. 51, down to 21. 51, 21. Enter to continue. Number four, enter. Priming. Again, 51, pulse. 21 again. So far, so good. All right, number five. Priming. 51 again, pulse injector. 21. All right. Six. And. Almost done. Priming system. 51. Pulse injector. 
29, 22. Okay. Let's see that one. 22. Last one. Primed pulse injector. Awesome. All right. So we're looking good. Everything's mo most every one of them was set about 21. I had one at about 22, but with uh, just one pound difference, then that way all my, my injectors look like they're are in good shape. They're all even. So now I know. So that's a that's a good good thing to know. And I have a baseline. So in the future, if I have any kind of engine problems, I can refer back to my notes, refer back to my video, and I say, okay, this is what they flowed so many years ago and compare it to you know because we're sitting at now about seventy thousand miles so in four or five years i want to check it again i can check it and see if there's much difference okay so we now we know how to do a uh, injector balance test so we got that part done but there's one more thing too if, if you suspect you got a bad in, injector is you can also do a ohms test and per the per the shop manual for our um injectors on 8.1 vortex we want between 11 to 14 ohms uh, with no more difference than three ohms between all the injectors as far as for an average and in case you don't know there's our injector you, and you can see that little actually got eight of them but you see the little green clip and that green clip is not user friendly you, it's kind of got a weird process and tell you the truth i forgot but i did make a video it's just a minute or two video, but man, it's very popular. It's had thousands upon thousands of views uh, because it is such a strange little connector to release. You got to push, pull, twist, hold your mouth just right. Then the connector comes off. At that point, then you can uh, put your voltometer onto the injector itself and measure its resistance and do that to all eight. Uh, because I do believe these things are running over $100 a piece. They're pretty expensive. But, you know, like this thing's got 70,000 miles and all of these are good. I don't think it's a, a common problem. Um, I, I've heard of a few people re replace them. But uh, I often wonder if, like I said before, a lot of this stuff gets replaced and that's not the problem. So that's why you really need a true diagnostic test so you know for sure that part is bad. Not, not just throwing expensive parts at it. Uh, so, anyways... Hope that, oh, one more thing, I'm, I'm going to leave this out here, because when you go to order these scan gauges, uh, the, the, the GM Tech 2, you have the option sometimes to, with or without this candy, this box here. This box, I guess, enables you to hook up to newer vehicles. Uh, with our workhorse, we don't need this. So you might be able to save some money if you opt not to buy this particular box, but you can do a little research and, and make sure, but... I think I remember that, but for the price I got it, I just got it in case I come across a newer vehicle I'm going to hook to and, and pull the data out of. Anyhow, I think that will conclude it for tonight. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.